Gehazi. Torah has a story about the prophet Elisha. Elisha Navi. Elisha, his rabbi, was Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu Navi, Zahul Atov, never died. You see it in the Tanakh that when it was time for him to go, HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't kill him. What did he do? He took a wind and a chariot brought him up to heaven. He turned him into a malach. Turned him into an angel. And Elisha, his student, took over as the prophet of the generation. Elisha was Kodesh Kodeshim. And one time a goy contacts Elisha saying that uh, he wants him to heal him. And Elisha told him to go to the river and dip in the river. And the king thought that he was making fun of him. So he didn't want to go until his servant said, listen, you already tried every other medicine. You already tried all the other, you know, wise people of the other nations. Why don't you try the wise people or the person of the Jews? If he's already here, might as well go to the river. What's the big deal? He went to the river, and as he went into the river, everybody saw him naked, and his whole body was full of disease. His whole body was full, full of, a, of a disease called sarat. And everybody was like, you know, like, you know, when you see something disgusting, you're taking back. When you see something painful, you're taking back. Combine both of them, multiply by a thousand. That's what he had. Awful, awful disease that's both spiritual and physical at the same time. Amash, gain home in this world. So they saw him take off his clothes. They saw all of his servants were like taken back. He went into the water. He got up out of the water. And everybody sees him like a baby. Disease gone. Completely gone. He goes back to Elisha Navi, says, Thank you very much. Now I know that you're a man of God. I want to convert my, myself and my whole nation. I want to become Jews. I want to become Ami Sayyid. Become part of this is the type of strength that your God has. I want to become a Jew and I'll convert my entire nation. Elisha said, Oh, welcome. Welcome. She said, Oh, I'm a king. I'm rich. Let me give you something. Elisha said, Oh. We don't take any money. We do what we do because it's Hashem's will. We're not taking any money for it. We told you the cure because HaKadosh Baruch gave us the nevoah to do it and we did it. Not because you're going to pay us nothing. We don't want anything from you, in fact. He said, even more impressed. You did all this, not even for kavod, not even for honor, not even for money. Not, like, there's really no reason for you to do this. It's even more impressive. I'm converting my whole people to you. Tommy said, Chazaku Baruch, he leaves. Do, 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 he starts walking half a mile away. All of a sudden, the servant of Elisha catches up to him. A guy by the name of Gehazi. Now, Gehazi wasn't a fool. Gehazi was Tamit Chacham. Gehazi had a beard, reached the floor. Strymol, everything. He had a Hasid. Hasid, Hasid. You know how many Shuwa Torah Gehazi used to do? Gehazi used to teach Torah. What? His rabbi. Is the prophet when the rabbi is not giving a shoe who's giving a shoe Gehazi is giving a shoe it's not like just some nobody some homeless guy with a uh, with a uh, hump no Gehazi was Tamit Chacham Gehazi had a lot of Torah in him his, pro- his rabbi is the Gdol Adol prophet you know how much Torah he knew you combine all of the world's Torah today he knew more than them that's how much Torah he knew but the Gemara says Gehazi en lo chelek le'olam abba. Gehazi has no share of the world to come. Where is he now? He's in Gehenom and he'll never leave. Why? Because Gehazi liked money a little bit. Just a little bit. He had a little chedak, a little germ for money. So he chased this king, caught up to him. Hey, listen. My rabbi, Elisha, he's kadosh, he's holy, he's too holy to... Say yes when you offer him some money. But between you and me, he's so humble, he's so pure, he's so good, he's not going to say yes. But really, he should, you should give him something. You should give him a few suits, a few nice suits, a few nice things. You're, you're big deal. The king says, of course, give him suits, give him a few, no problem. But in his mind, he said, of course, no problem. But in his mind, the value of Elisha, the value of Am Yisrael, the value of Torah, and the value of Akadosh Baruch Hu himself, just dropped down. 
Why? Because now it has a price. Your God has a price. Your people have a price. Your Torah has a price. Your prophet has a price. Your rabbi has a price. Once he has a price, ah, I can pay for it. I can buy it. So you know what? I'll just be a Noahide. I'm not going to convert. Still righteous, but I'm not going to convert. When Elisha saw Gehazi come back, he told him, what'd you do? He told him, well, actually, he knew it already from prophecy. Elisha and Avi said, the curse that was on him will be on you and all of your descendants and your suffering will never end. His own rabbi cursed him to no end. Why? Look how many lives you destroyed by this Chilul Hashem. This guy would have converted every single second of his life would have been a mitzvah. Those mitzvot were going to honor Hashem. Honoring Hashem is the only purpose of creation. Now, he's not going to do it. That's God. His wife would have converted too. How many thoughts are you going to do? Honor Hashem. That's gone. The kids, gone. The grandkids, gone. The great grandkids, gone. The descendants of the grandkids, the descendants of the nation. Look how many mitzvot and opportunities to sanctify Hashem's name at the highest level possible are now missing. Why? Because you wanted to interrupt. Because you wanted to tell people your opinion. Because you wanted to eh, get involved, be interactive. Give your own peace of mind, even though it was not asked for. So Elisha says, you caused such a desecration to Hashem's name, and just like the greatness will never cease to, it will never come to the world, the suffering will never end either. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, His good, His mercy, is extraordinary, beyond our imagination. But so is His wrath. It comes together. All of the people that want to ignore that part are just living an illusion. An illusion. All you got to know as far as see wrath, go watch the video I, I recommended to you guys about the Holocaust. Look at the millions of dead bodies on the floor of our brothers and sisters. If that's not wrath, what's wrath? Go to the hospice center, local hospice center, any hospice center, and just walk bed by bed. Bed by bed, and just hear their screaming and yelling right before they die. Go, go. Or no, better yet, you want to go to the cancer. Go to the cancer place. Go to the hospital. Go to the cancer unit. Just hear them get the chemo. Hear them get the chemo and suffer. Go to the, go to the ICU. I spent months and months in the ICU. I spent months in Shtabach Shemot at the ICU. Sometimes I want to check myself in again. Just to deal with the day. Go to the ICU. Go see how we scream really, really loud there from the pain. What do you think that is? What do you think? That's a bonus? What do you think? That's a present? It's pain, Rabotai. Wrath exists. Punishment exists. Yes, there's always something good that comes out of every bad. But it doesn't mean that the bad is not bad doesn't mean a genom doesn't exist. And people that want to live this imaginary life, we just pray for them to do tshuva, or that Hashem will judge them as a shoteh, as a crazy person. Because a crazy person is not obligated to fulfill the entire Torah. 